You're shuffling up for game one. You draw your seven cards. Only one island stares back at you, along with Fairy Seer and Ninja of the Deep Hours. The clock is ticking. Do you trust it, or do you shuffle it back? Every fairy's pilot knows this tension, and the answer isn't just intuition, it's mathematics. Mono Blue Fairies is one of the Pauper's most elegant tempo decks, evasive threats backed by ninjutsu tricks that generate card advantage while maintaining pressure. But unlike mid-range or control strategies that can recover from stumbles, tempo decks cannot afford to miss a beat. Missing that second land, or failing to deploy early threats, typically means falling too behind to recover. In this video, we'll model the deck mathematically and break down the probabilities behind different configurations and decisions. We won't tell you exactly what to keep or mulligan. That depends on your matchup, your experience, and your risk tolerance. Instead, we'll give you the numbers so you can make informed decisions. The math will tell you the odds. You will decide if they're worth the gamble. For additional insight on navigating these decisions in practice, check out my friend Skura's channel, a top-tier Mono Blue Fairies pilot and my collaborator for this project. He has played this deck to competitive success at highest levels, and his deep understanding of the archetype can help you interpret these probabilities in real game situations. Together, we've also co-written a comprehensive Keep and Mulligan guide, hosted on Metafy, where we combine this mathematical framework with practical expertise to give you the ultimate resource for mastering opening hand decisions with fairies. All the links are in the description below. The uncertainty ends here. Let's do the math. We'll break the analysis into four parts. First, we'll look at opening hand land distribution and understand how different land counts shape the hands you actually see. Second, we'll study one land hands and compute the probability of finding a second land, especially when can selection is involved. Third, we'll move to the core strategy of the deck, the probability of opening a one drop plus ninja and how mulligans improve these odds. Finally, we'll look at hands with no ninja and examine what it means to rely on drawing into your pay of creatures. We begin by analyzing the distribution of lands in an opening hand for mono blue fairies. Before exploring specific scenarios, we need to establish the mathematical foundation for our analysis. When you draw your opening hand in Magic, you are sampling cards without a replacement from a 60 card deck. This isn't a coin flip or a dice roll, it follows from what's called a hypergeometric distribution. This is the appropriate statistical model whenever you are drawing from a finite population where each draw changes the odd for the next one. The formula tells us the probability of drawing exactly k lands in a 7 card opening hand. If the number of ways to choose k cards from your total lands times the number of ways to choose the remaining cards from known lands divided by the total number of 7 card hands. You don't need to memorize the formula. What matters is the implication. Your opening hand probabilities are completely determined by deck construction. Change the land count and you reshape the entire distribution. Let's examine realistic configurations ranging from 16 to 20 lands. With 16 lands, the distribution is heavily land light. About 10% of hands have 0 lands, 29% have 1, and 34% have 2. Missing early land drop is common. Moving to 17 lands improves things slightly. 0 land hands drop to 8%, 1 landers to about 27%, but the deck is still biased towards too few lands. At 18 lands, something important happens. The distribution becomes balanced. Zero land hands drop to 7%, one land hands to about 24%, and two land hands remain around 34%. One and three land hands are nearly equal, minimizing extreme outcomes. Going further to 19 or 20 lands, shift the curve to the right. Three land hands become more common than one landers, improving mana stability, but at the cost of spell density and early pressure. Looking at the numbers more closely, with 18 lands, the average opening hand contains about 2.1 lands, which is the ideal playable range. Fewer lands increase mulligan risk. More lands reduce your ability to apply pressure. The verdict is clear. For the purpose of starting hand land distribution, 18 lands hits the sweet spot. Consistent enough to avoid frequent mulligans, but lean enough to maintain third density. Let's address the elephant in the room. Should you ever keep a one land hand? Conventional wisdom says no, but Mono Blue Fairies isn't a conventional deck. After keeping a one land hand, your library has 53 cards left. One land is in your hand, so there are L-1 lands remaining in the deck. The question is simple. What is the probability of seeing at least one additional land in the next few cards? The formula computes exactly that. 
the chance of finding at least one land after seeing key cards, accounting for both draws and card selection. For an 18 land deck, the row numbers are sobering. On the play, with just your turn 1 draw, you have a 32% chance of finding your second land. By turn 2, that becomes a 54%, basically a coin flip. Without card selection, one landers really are gambling. Now here is where Fairy Seer changes everything. That Scry 2 means that you effectively see 3 to 4 cards by turn 2. With Fairy Seer, your probability jumps to nearly 70% on the play and around 80% on the draw. This is why Fairy Seer isn't just good, it's structural to the deck. The practical takeaway is very sharp. One land hands are keepable if they contain Fairy Seer. Now we get to the heart of the deck's game plan. Mono Blue Fairies wants to deploy a one drop, attack unblocked, and bounce it for a ninja, generating both pressure and card advantage. This means that your opening hand needs two elements, at least one one drop and at least one ninja. We divide keepable hands into two categories. Category 1 One land hands with Fairy Seer and a ninja, made viable by Scry. Category 2 Hands with 2 to 4 lands, any one drop, and a ninja. For an 18 land deck with 17 one drops, the probability of opening with this core combination is only about 44%. More than half of the time, your opening 7 doesn't do what your deck is built to do. This is why mulligans are not optional, they are essential. Each mulligan is another independent attempt to hit this combination. One mulligan jumps your probability to 68%, two mulligans push it to 82%, and three mulligans reach nearly 90%. The cost of going down a card is far overweighted by executing your strategy. Now let's talk about threat density. Increasing from 16 to 18 one drops only improves your no mulligan probability by about 1.7 percentage points. Even pushing to the 20 one drops gain only a few percent total, at the cost of interaction and late game power. The sweet spot is 16 to 18 one drops. Beyond that, returns diminish rapidly. The plot makes this clear. Mulligans matter far more than stuffing extra one drops into the deck. Consistency comes from decision making, not overloading your list. Now let's examine a common trap, hands with no ninjas. After keeping such a hand, your deck has 53 cards, 8 of which are ninjas. The probability of drawing at least one ninja follows the same hypergeometric logic as before. The results are grim. By turn 2 on the play, you have a 50% chance, on the draw, 28%. By turn 3 on the draw, still only 49%, not even a coin flip. Even with Fairy Seer, the odds remain unreliable. Keeping zero ninja hands means hoping multiple things to go right in the sequence, and tempo decks cannot afford hope. Only keep these hands with strong interactions or exceptional card selection. Let's bring everything together. We've established that 18 lands provides optimal balance, giving you playable hands while minimizing extreme outcomes. We've seen that 16 to 18 one drops maximizes consistency without sacrificing your interaction suit. We've learned that one land hands aren't the trap they seem, if they contain fairies here. The scry 2 ability transforms a 32% gamble into a 70% probability of finding your second land on the play and 80% on the draw. We've discovered that the core combination, Wonder plus Ninja, appears in only 44% of opening hands, making mulligan decision strategy absolutely crucial. A single mulligan jumps you to 68%, two mulligans get you to 82%. The cost of one fewer card is far overweighted by having the right tools to execute your strategy. We've also learned that hands with no ninjas need a very strong reasons to be kept, with less than a 50% chance of finding a ninja by turn 3, even with card selection you are hoping, not planning. The key insight is this. Mono Blue Fairies is a deck of precision. It executes a specific game plan and it rewards pilots who understand the mathematics underlying that plan. Your mulligan decisions aren't guesses, they are calculations. Your keep or mulligan choices aren't intuition, but they are probabilities. So next time you're starting at opening 7, wondering if you should trust it, remember, you have the numbers, you know the odds, and you've done the math. And in magic, just like in mathematics, knowledge is power.